Hi there, Peter Jones, Chartered Surveyor, Author and Property Investor and in this, the ninth video of our 12 part series, we're going to think about which business entity best fits our needs. Now, in the old days there would have been quite a lot of debate, do we do it in our own name, do we do it in a limited company, do we do it in an LLP, for example. Because of uh, Section 24, and if you're wondering what Section 24 is, let me give a very quick recap. In the budget of, uh, I think it was June or July 2015, just after the 2015 election, the then Chancellor, George Osborne, by, lo now he's, by the way he's no longer Chancellor, he's gone but he's left us all this trouble. Basically George Osborne said that going forward, uh, it, the ability to offset mortgage interest against rent would be phased out. So when we get to 2020, 2021, no longer able to offset any of our mortgage interest against the rents when we're calculating profit for tax purposes. Now it's going to be phased out so it goes down by sort of 25% each year depending upon which tax year you're in and that's section 24 of the Finance Act and I guess it was the Finance Act 2015. Not great if you're buying properties. The thing is though the main effect seems to be if you buy properties in your own name. Why do I say that? Because it seems at the moment, as things stand at the time of filming this, that it doesn't actually affect limited companies. So the obvious answer probably for most people is to buy their properties in limited companies. Now if you've already bought properties, I know of people who've been able to move their properties across, so they've been able to incorporate and move their properties into a limited company. Now the thing you need to worry about there is you could, because it's a deemed transaction, even if the, the properties are in your name and you're moving it into your limited company, because the limited company is a separate entity, you could pay capital gains tax and you could pay stamp duty. But I know people who've taken advice from accountants who in turn have taken advice from HMRC on the best way of doing this and they've been able to incorporate by moving their properties across without paying any tax. I'm not an accountant, please don't email me asking how you do it, but do get in touch with a property accountant and they will be able to help you to do it. Coming back to the point, what is the best entity? Well, for most people probably it's going to be buying properties in a limited company. Now I say probably because I've got to give the usual caveat, I don't know what your personal financial situation is. You've got to sit down with your accountant and just check that it really is the best way for you because for some people it might not be. But probably for 99% of investors going forward it probably will be. But just remember Peter's not an IFA, Peter's not an accountant, so get somebody who knows what they're talking about to check that for you. Now of course that's a very simple way of looking at it. It may be for example that you want to create a legacy and leave all of your properties to your children. Maybe then you should be thinking about some kind of a trust. Or maybe you buy your properties in a limited company and the shares are held in a trust, maybe. So that could get quite complicated. Again, not anything I can really talk about, but of course there will be ways and means of doing that. Would we ever do it in an LLP? Well, possibly, and I know that if you're doing serviced accommodation, for example, there can be arguments for starting in an LLP. Again, I don't know anything about that because I'm a surveyor and not an accountant. But for 99% of investors who are starting out, particularly those who are doing simple single let, buy to lets, buying in a limited company going forward is going to be the best way. Check with your accountant. Now before you worry about it, it's relatively easy to raise finance for buy to lets in a limited company. That's all I've ever done. More by luck than judgment, I've always bought all my properties into a limited company never had any problems raising finance against them. Common questions are though, does the bank need to see three years trading by the company? No, because they know the company is just a shell vehicle to hold the properties. They will look at your stats though, they'll look at your earnings, they'll look at your wage slips, they'll look see how much money you've got as an individual, so they'll check you as an individual but the money will get lent to your limited company. So it's all very straightforward. There are buy to let lenders out there who will lend knowing that you're going to buy through a limited company so that's not a problem. There may be less than there are who would lend to an individual but there's still plenty of buy to let products which are geared up for limited companies. So that would be the entity which most of us are going to be thinking about. So I hope that helps. Here's to successful property investing.